Hi, good morning everybody. This is Scott from Transportation Training Group. This morning I want to discuss with you on how to find out what to pay your trucks. We want to discuss this morning primarily we're talking about produce. A lot of you guys when you get into this industry you're going to be running produce because it's just that easy to find shippers with it. This is going to be a little short video to kind of give you a clue on how shippers determine their rates to pay you the broker or the broker agent. Um, basically a good resource to use is the USDA all right, which is the United States Department of Agriculture and specifically the Agricultural Marketing Service. Now you'll see in front of you on the screen here that we're actually on their website right now. Well, every Wednesday, the USDA Agricultural Marketing Service, they issue a report. It's called the Fruit and Vegetable Truck Rate Report. It'll come out in a text file, and it'll come out in a PDF file. This truck rate will, report will detail the availability of trucks in certain regions or certain hot spots of produce. And it will also give you an idea of what trucks are being paid to take vegetables from these hot spots to the terminal markets across the US. If you guys don't know what a terminal market is, your terminal markets are typically Boston, Chicago, Atlanta, New York, they'll be found in these bigger cities because that's where the actual larger trucks will take produce to and then they'll be split off from produce wholesalers into like 28 foot reefers for regional runs um, for instance if you're in Atlanta the terminal market's going to be Forest Park um, if you're in Boston the terminal market is up in Chelsea and if you're in New York City it's Hunts Point now there's a terminal market in every major city um, in America, all right, and the and the trucks will will go to these terminal markets, as I said, to to drop off their product. Now, when you get here, you're going to see the link that says Market News on the USDA's Marketing Service website. You want to click the PDF version of the Fruit and Vegetable Truck Rate Report. As I said before, this is issued every Wednesday and you'll look at the date I'm recording this video I'm recording it on the 25th of September alright and right there it is it comes out every morning at about 8 a.m. when it pops up here and they're gonna it starts off with the truck availability and as you look down here in the district and the region you'll see Kern District California Salinas Watsonville California the San Joaquin Valley all these are hot spots all right all these are hot spots and you'll see the truck availability at the top which is surplus slight surplus adequate slight shortage and a shortage all right now just look at your uh, graph that is presented in front of you everything in green adequate supply of trucks well that means rates are going to be moderate because they have plenty of trucks available all right what I do when I'm moving freight if I'm going to move produce I'm gonna look where there's a slight shortage of trucks all right. So if you're looking up here, you know, the San Luis Valley, there's shortage there. Eastern North Carolina, Nebraska, and, you know, that's a slight shortage. But if I look for a shortage, Idaho and Malhern County, Oregon. Well, up there, that's potatoes and onions. All right. Upper Valley, Twin Falls, Burley District, Idaho, shortage. Trucks haven't started moving up there yet. Big Lake and Central Minnesota, shortage. They're shipping golden potatoes out of there. All right, and the Columbia Basin in Washington, there's a shortage. So your rates are going to be higher because the shippers have to pay the rate to get this freight moved. All right, so if you have a pre existing relationship with some carriers that are looking for freight, you know you can get a higher rate from these shippers at this time because it's going to be harder for them to find trucks. You know, they can't lean on you as much, they, they lose their negotiating power, if you will. We're going to scroll down to the next page. All right, and you're going to see this price range for the week of September 18th to the 24th. What they're doing is showing you the price that trucks are being paid on average to move from these hot spots the uh, of where um, 
the vegetables come out of going to certain terminal markets. We'll use as an illustration right here the Kern District of California. And it's going to show you grapes and carrots adequate. That means the supply is there. All right. When it says grapes and carrots adequate, that means there's no shortage of them coming out of the fields. And this is going to show you what the shippers are paying the truck. Well, to go to Atlanta, they've been averaging 57 to 5,900 a load. To go to Baltimore, 6,800 to 7,000 a load. Now, when I say that they're paying trucks this, this is what they might be paying a truck or paying a broker, et cetera. So if a broker were to get it for seven grand, determine upon your commission structure that you make off of your loads, you know, you might end up giving that to a truck for 62, 6300 bucks if you're only making a slim 10%. You know, you might pay them six grand, depending on, you know, what your company has set for a commission structure, all right? But you'll see the money is still going to Boston, all right? Eight grand going to Boston for a, for a truck. So that's, if you do the math, that's probably going to be around 260 a mile. You know, because you're in the central district down there in California, and Boston is not the best place for a truck to go because he's going to pull out of there cheap. Now, if you look where he's going to Dallas and Chicago, they're not paying a bunch. All right? If, if they go to Chicago, they're only paying $4,900. The reason that is is because there's plenty of freight coming out of Chicago for reefers. You know, it's not going to be a lot of vegetables and stuff, but, you know, there's a lot of frozen foods and, and meats and things like that. He could also bust up to Michigan about 150 miles away, straight up 8094, and grab cucumbers, which are really, really hot right now at this time of the year, and then eventually apples and pumpkins, you know, with it. Don't think that produce just comes out of California right now. Or, or South Texas coming across from Mexico or across from Arizona through Nogales. All of your states are shipping produce right now. I mean, you've got Georgia that's moving uh, sweet corn and squash and, and things of that nature. You've got Florida that's shipping a few tomatoes. You know, North Carolina shipping, Louisiana shipping uh, sweet potatoes. You know, so you have to pay attention to the produce markets and what and when they become available and are harvested. The state of Michigan will be shipping for the next two months just apples and cucumbers and things like that because they're a late season crop. But let's focus on our trucks again. You're going to see where it's very, very hot and where your produce is coming out of. That's what this is about. Not only to pay your trucks and, and what to charge your shippers or what they're going to possibly pay you, all right? You're going to see here, if you pay attention, where your produce is coming out of, where to look for your shippers. Well, Salinas, Watsonville, California, number one, always a hot spot. It's America's salad bowl. The San Joaquin Valley, Santa Maria. You look over here on the right-hand side, South Georgia, cucumber, eggplant, squash. So you'd be looking for, for either growers or packers in South Georgia that are shipping cucumber, eggplants, and squash. Your target market target customer is going to be a grower a packer, or a produce broker. Now, a lot of these companies that are produce brokers, some of them, I should say, have their own logistics units. So they'll actually broker the load to the logistics unit, then they'll broker it to you. It is not a case of double brokering because the company actually owns the brokerage. They just see it as a different profit center by doing it that way through the transportation. And there are a lot of companies that, that have went to that. But you can still get your independent, independent packing houses and things of that nature to, uh, to deal with you as a freight agent. And most of these guys do deal with brokers. You're going to see that these guys here are going to deal with your larger brokers like TQL, CH Robinson, things of that nature. But what I have found, you know, just in the many years I've been brokering freight, they're going to prefer to deal with a smaller brokerage because they can get individualized service and better service. You know, when a shipper deals with a larger brokerage, they kind of get lost in the mix. Larger brokerages, uh, pretty much they have a, uh, a slash and burn approach. They want to throw as many people in a phone room as possible and get them just dialing trucks. They also have a bad reputation with trucks for cheaper rates because of all the overhead they have. All right? Now, it, it, they don't have a bad reputation for not paying. That's not what I'm saying. They do pay their bills, of course. They just have a bad, trucks don't like running for them because the rates are so damn cheap. You know, you could afford to pay them a little bit more because you are a smaller broker, 
you know although is you know your downfall is you you're not going to have the the broker database that they have I'm sorry the carrier database that they have at their disposal all right but if you look at this continue to look at this it'll cover everywhere from California Idaho down to the south you know you'll even look up here at New York look what's shipping uh, out of New York right now apples a lot of people don't know you know that New York produces a lot of produce there's Long Island they got potatoes coming out of Long Island going to primarily the East Coast all right they, they've got uh, upstate New York apples are coming out going to Atlanta Baltimore Boston and Chicago you know and you'll look at the rates to Atlanta you can get some decent money going there you can always get money going to Florida they're paying about 3200 bucks it's probably about two dollars a mile go to Chicago you'll notice that they're only paying twelve hundred dollars it's about a buck fifty a mile it'll be a pretty good backhaul for a truck you know at a buck fifty a buck sixty a mile and that's what it's averaging now they're not going to pay you a flat rate for the most part they're probably going to give you the load at a per weight rate it could be a hundred weight it could be a bag rate of a hundred pounds or fifty pound bags so the money you make is going to be determined upon how much your truck loads and you'll always want to ask your shipper if you could load to capacity with that and just tell your truck that you know and he knows this already but re reaffirm to him that you max it out the more money you make the more money I make all right but you know as you continue to look down through here you know we're going to jump to the left side of the page where it says Michigan onions there's onions coming out of Michigan they're only primarily shipping to Chicago Big Lake in central Minnesota these potatoes have been in storage that means they've already been cropped and they'll probably be in storage for the next couple months all right but now you look down to Mississippi your sweet potatoes are coming out your watermelons are coming out of Texas and Oklahoma right now and you'll see the rates going to all your different terminal markets and they range from 22 to twenty eight hundred dollars all right going to like Atlanta and it's staying steady right around in there Baltimore 34 to 42 currently all right but you'll see a bounce 36 to 4,000 on the average you'll see these little numbers on the on the um, side here it's going to be either zero or plus two plus two means plus two percentage up or down when you see something like that all right but this will just give you an indication of what your your freight is going to cost you to charge a shipper now that is not what you would pay the truck as a broker because you have to make money but a lot of guys ask me how do you set rates and things of that nature and this is one of the tools that I will use I am not one of those people that goes to a shipper and simply says well what are you paying if you have that approach when you go toward a shipper you're going to lose money every time you have to understand what type of freight that you're pulling especially with produce and things like that this stuff is going to die on the vine all right it is perishable it will go bad it has to move all right now mind you there are a lot of other guys out there gunning for that business so you can only negotiate so far with this stuff but you don't just have to lay down and take the first thing he throws at you because if you do that then you he's going to do that continuously with you all right it's a give-and-take relationship it's got to be a win-win um, situation for both of you but you know just use this go to the USDA's website here and I'll scroll back up to the top so you can see it again you know and get the fruit and vegetable truck rate report it's available from the agricultural marketing service via email you can get on their email list and they will email this to you when it's updated every Wednesday it's a free service you don't have to pay anything for it you know it's just good to come to your inbox so you can stay you know up on your rates and what your higher moving produce lanes are paying especially if you're in this industry and you're running a lot of reefers this is a great report that you can use as a broker or a great report that you can use as a truck well that's going to conclude this video today uh, I'll upload it here to YouTube in just a moment please visit our website at www.freightbrokertrainer.com 
That's www.freightbrokertrainer.com. You can contact us toll-free at 855-269-9100. We offer the most comprehensive freight broker training programs anywhere. We're not going to discuss a bunch of legal stuff. Um, with you. We will show you the legalities in moving freight, but unlike a lot of people, we actually teach you about the industry, teach you how to set rates. We'll teach you how to move your freight and find your shippers. I'll be uh, uploading this here shortly. Look at our other videos, and we'd like to thank you for viewing this video today.